This week, all eyes were on the UN as Argentinian President Javier Millet and others uh, uh, spoke. Uh, Javier Millet blasted the United Nations, saying it had moved from an organisation that pursued peace to an organisation that imposes an ideological agenda on its members. Uh, Douglas, he also criticised the UN Pact for the Future plan and said the organisation had become one of the main proponents of systematic violations of freedom. He was uh, referring to COVID-era policies there, but also the fact that they allow these dictatorships, these despot nations to sit on the Human Rights Council and then condemn a country like Israel. This has been the case for decades with the UN. Uh, the problem with the UN is that whatever setup you had to replace it, if you ever could replace it, would probably end up looking something like it. My view is that it's perfectly OK to have a talking shop like the UN. It's probably a, a good idea to have something where the world's leaders can meet. But nobody should be en under any illusions about this entity. And many people, it seems, are. Uh, you know, we have at the UN... Um, dictatorship after dictatorship holding the floor to lambast the world's democracies, including uh, the only free liberal democracy in the Middle East, Israel. And they just do it day in, day out, year in, year out. That's been happening for decades. And in part, that's because, you know, the dictators like to do that because it takes attention from what they do back home. And it takes away attention from their own larceny and, and theft and corruption and and much more. Um, and and yeah, they always use the punching bag of Israel. Occasionally, they also use the punching bag of America. Um, look, the organization has always been the same. It's always been obscene. It's always allowed obscenity to go on at an international scale. But you've just got to look at it and realize that, you know, the world's democracies should not be having to take much notice, if any, of, you know, various despots and dictators saying they don't like something that's happening in free liberal democracies. Well, they wouldn't, would they? The question is whether you take it that seriously or not. And I would argue people just shouldn't. Now, El Salvador's uh, wildly popular president, Naive uh, Bukele, also addressed the uh, United Nations. Uh, he had some pointed remarks about regimes that prosecute and seek to imprison their political opponents. And he responded to his uh, crackdown on violent gangs in El Salvador, which has been heavily criticised in the Western media. He said... In El Salvador, the safety of law-abiding citizens is a higher priority than the comfort of criminals. And uh, he said, some say that we have imprisoned thousands, but the reality is that we have freed millions. Uh, there's a new generation of leaders, Douglas, whether it's Millet in Argentina, Bukele in, in El Salvador, Giorgio Maloney in Italy, and they're showing a new type of leadership and resisting the UN and this entire notion of collectivism well there's certainly um there's certainly something that's breaking the mold um all the people you listed are doing it in different ways uh, but i mean wh what i think you've seen in recent years has been a backlash against a certain sort of bureaucratic world economic forum davos like class mm. which simply overplayed its hand there's always this thing in politics of you know the adults in the room and the problem is, is if the adults are shown to be wearing no clothes, um, you know, eventually somebody comes along and points it out. Uh, uh, we've had quite a lot of those people now. Uh, the adults really kept on exposing themselves in every way as not as competent as they thought they were. Uh, the international financial crises in the last decades, uh, the immigration crises that are roiling all of the uh, mm. uh, developed countries, all of these things, you know, rampant criminality in major American cities, lawlessness and much more, all of these things go on for a certain time overseen by the alleged adults. And then at some point, mm -hmm. um, other people will come along. Uh, I think we've been rather lucky, actually, that n nobody un really unsavory has come along. Uh, it's quite surprising, yeah. although if you read some of the coverage of Millet and others, you'd, you, you'd think, you know, that they... They were the worst thing that could possibly come. No, this is this is the the beginning of some kind of backlash against that bureaucratic class that said they knew how to run everything and turned out to be able to run an awful lot of things into the ground.
And we're seeing it in many parts of Europe as well. It really is quite a fascinating period. Uh, before you go, I've got to ask you about the case against Sean P. Diddy Combs. Uh, uh, so far, he's been charged with three counts of sex trafficking, racketeering, transportation to engage in prostitution. Uh, he has been denied bail, but we are starting to get some uh, defence lines from his legal team. I don't know how good they are. His lawyer claims uh, that the 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lube Homeland Security found when they raided his mansions were, were due to an error from Costco. And he also said that Diddy likes to buy in bulk. Uh, uh, dear me. Uh, how nervous, on a serious note, Douglas, uh, is is Hollywood, the music industry, the, the A-list in general about this case and what it could reveal? I have to say I'm um, uh, one of those people who's pretty unfamiliar with the work of Mr. Diddy. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> much about his work. <laughs> but I can tell you, I can tell you that when these sorts of stories come up, there is an awful lot of worry in uh, that class. Um, it's obvious that there are certain things that go on, certain sort of secrets that are held effectively among certain A-listers. What always happens about about this when it, when it when it comes up is that people end up coming out saying everybody knew and all that sort of thing. Um, I think that always shows something rather pathetic. My preference always is uh, let's see how the law progresses. This has to be uh, litigated in the law courts, and we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of rumour around, a lot of uh, casting of aspersions, but we've seen in cases before that where that can go wrong. Um, I'll hope that the, mm. we'll all hope that the American justice system, uh, it proves to be the place where we can find out what actually has happened. Um, but yes, in the meantime, uh, the um, some of the things you, you had just listed there suggest that uh, perhaps Mr. Diddy ought to get uh, other defence uh, lawyers on his case, because those were sound that great yes for starters and again to me it highlights when we hear these as celebrities whether it's at the oscars or the the music awards opining about social and political issues oh, yeah. and lecturing the country uh these people seem to exist in a different reality and, and their moral compass seems to be rather different to most ordinary folk. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, we saw that we with that whole Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Sorry, yeah, go we on. Certainly should, we certainly shouldn't listen, amazingly, and something I've said for many years, we shouldn't listen to celebrities about the state of the planet, the state of politics or anything else. They're not qualified to do it. They are probably qualified to do small numbers of things that they can do. Uh, they should do that. The rest of us should absolutely ignore their proclamations. They count for zilch. Less than the UN, you might say. <laughs> Less than the UN. Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time this evening. Great to see you as always.